Hey you guys, today I'm going to take you with me as a cloud security architect working completely remotely. Now today is going to be a more of a no meeting kind of day for me. So I'm going to get started. I have big plans. I need to renew my AZ500 credential. And then I also have to do a presentation because I have a huge management meeting coming up tomorrow and I need to be prepared for that. So I'm just going to get ready for the day because I am also going to go out and about. I'm going to go and pick up a smoothly and then I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna work together let's see if it's chilly outside I really hope that it's warm the sun seems to be shining so that's really cool perfect it's actually a gorgeous gorgeous day right so I mean this isn't like typically easy morning for me sometimes I do try and order like juices and things in bulk but I do enjoy a juice or a good smoothie in the morning so that's what we're gonna do today Today I went for a Jones Identity Juice which has kale, cucumbers, spinach and a lot of green stuff. So now we're off to start working. I think I forgot the key outside the door. <laughs> Definitely did that. Okay, my hair looks crazy, but as we head into the working space, I wanted to let you guys know, firstly, it's important for you to understand that no specific day in cybersecurity is the same. Hold on, let me get this thing right. Right, so I think that would be the case for me and a lot of other cybersecurity professionals. No one day in cybersecurity is the same. The next thing is that when people glamorize the life of a cybersecurity professional, be very wary of that. Today, as an example, I'm working remotely. It's one of the fewer days in the last two-ish months that I feel that I have like a set out list of things to accomplish and I can fully stick to that list because I have like no meetings today and I probably won't get interrupted with some big emergency but that is like cross fingers touch wood that that is actually the case right so a lot of my days look like jumping out of bed getting ready for the day and then sitting here stuck at my desk because one thing came after the next and the next and the next so it also looks that way. I also sometimes go into the office. So sometimes we have workshops. As an example, I'm right now today planning for a presentation. So that's the presentation that I'm gonna do. I'm planning for this and I will actually go and present it at an on-site kind of workshop in the next few days. So cybersecurity is a very good career space it's a very good working environment however depending on which role you have in cybersecurity, you might work longer hours than other people i typically work long hours but on my own time if that makes sense maybe it doesn't let me explain it a little bit so because i'm a cloud security architect i'm not involved in day-to-day -day incidents and day-to-day -day operational things I am more focused on my own tasks, projects, and getting things over the line to get deployed securely into our cloud environment. Now, this also means that sometimes I do a lot of architecture work, strategic work, of course, but I do a lot of documenting architecture. So this might take me four hours to document an architecture for one application, as an example. And with this, I can do this in the evening, I can do it early in the morning. If I choose to kind of spend the bulk of my day in another way, I do have that leeway and I do have that decision. But I just wanna share some transparency here that days don't look all glamorous, all this, all that. Some days my back hurts completely from sitting on this chair and really just trying to figure out like how I can get out of this chair by, you know, finishing the things that I need to do. But a lot of days, the things that I need to do, like I don't end them or I don't finish them. So there's also that aspect. We're gonna continue and living our glamour life today um, and hopefully nothing gets in the way of me trying to execute all of the initiatives that I have planned for the day. Alright so first up I just 
checked my emails and already we have a change of plans here because I have to quickly do a review of connecting a storage account securely to the power platform. Best practice from a storage account perspective is to use private endpoint but then if you want to use platform services like the power platform then that's not really private so I need to figure out how do we not um, what's the word I have to figure out how do we not deviate from our policy, deviate, and get this storage account to work with the power platform as well. So off to researching then. Okay, you guys, that took about 30 minutes for me to kind of look at alternate options for connecting the storage account to the power platform and then give the team some feedback. So the reading of the email plus the research and kind of looking at an alternate option instead of granting kind of a policy exemption and then the response with this recommended option it took me about 30 to 35 minutes here's the reasoning so for those interested the best practice is to not publicly expose your storage accounts right it is to use private endpoints for your storage account however to connect to the power platform this was an issue because you would ideally have to expose publicly but then allow certain access lists for the power platform specifically to connect to the storage account now that is one option to connect to your storage account but from the power platform to the storage you can also use what is called a azure blob storage connector so this connector would basically be set up between the power platform and the blob storage so you would configure the storage with the access key on the power platform and in this way you can then also connect these storage account to the power platform in that way. Both options provide benefits over the other. It just kind of depends on the required and recommended architecture here. In our case, we really try to limit public exposure of any of our platform service assets. So in this case, to connect specifically only the power platform with this specific storage account, the alternate option seems like the better one, which is the blob storage connector. So I've given my recommendation. If if there is a reason why this won't work etc then the team will get back to me on that then I will review granting an exemption for them on that. Right next up I'm gonna move straight into doing this presentation because I'm already time struck on the presentation I have about four slides which I completed before it's gonna be like a half an hour 45 minute ish presentation that I'm gonna do and it is around cloud security architecture strategic objectives that was completed for the year to leadership and kind of a lot of management stakeholders so it is an important one i need to do about three more slides i'm aiming for about seven or eight slides in total but i just need to make sure that it has a good storyline and a good flow and of course like in my work day i can show you nothing on my screen that's why you are kind of just seeing me here working and going about doing this but yeah i think after i finish the presentation then i might go and grab something to eat again and then from there i'm gonna do the renewal of the az 500 let's do it okay so i'm taking a quick snack break so i'm having these gluten-free cheese rice cakes and some water the presentation honestly is taking me so much longer so it is about 11 30 a.m now and I am still busy with this presentation. So it's been about two hours now. And the reason it's more difficult is actually because there are a lot of workflows involved, like explaining the workflow of like the flow of a threat identification and how we aim to kind of proactively get ahead of this from a cloud security perspective. So it's very involved, very in-depth. So it is taking me quite some time to complete it. I do have one more slide to complete. So I really want to challenge myself to complete that one before I go to lunch, but I was absolutely starving. So I had to go get my water and my rice cakes. I also just got the heads up that there is a potential other issue that might be a more urgent one that I need to look at. So I might need to stop in the middle and then take care of that. But let's work on finishing the prison. 
I'll show you guys, it is now 12.30, almost between 12.30 and 1. And um, look at the cute little checkpoint firewall from my early days in network security. Okay, I'm about ready to go and have something to eat now. So let's see what we got. I'm just gonna have my favorite, which is gonna be some olives, um, some Philadelphia cream cheese, and then some salmon. That was it for a quick lunch now i honestly feel like i need to stand to do this az 500 even if i don't get to some of the other stuff that i had planned for the day i really want to focus on getting the az 500 renewed because i don't want that one to expire on me so i'm gonna go into focus mode now and i'm gonna work on this renewal and i will let you guys know when it is done Hey guys, I've just completed the AZ500 renewal. For me, it was 25 questions. I got an 80% pass rate, so that's good enough to renew it for one more year. So I'm super happy with that. It was actually well balanced. So there was stuff about intra-ID. Actually, I think a lot of questions maybe five in the, in the assessment was on intra-ID. Then virtual networks, private access, private endpoints, some of the kind of advanced security compute stuff. There was one question on Sentinel, one on Defender for Cloud, like two or three on policy and some others on like platform services, key vault storage, etc. So it's pretty good. I find that it's really nice to renew these certifications. So then you figure out if you're still up to date with the latest knowledge. I have to renew the SC200 as well, but I can renew that one by April next year. So I'd rather wait until April next year. But this has taken me up to about, it's now 2.30 p.m. So for now, I think I'm going to wrap up on some of my other work tasks and then I'm going to get ready to go and pick up my daughter from kindergarten. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. So right now I spent about an hour to go through my emails orchestrate some tasks i did another review of the power platform connectivity because we still are experiencing some issues there so i needed to review that and give feedback on that and then i finished the presentation which was a huge huge stumbling block of my day today and then i had a win with the az500 renewal so i feel like mentally here it's 3.30 now so which means that it is time for me now to go and pick up my daughter from kindergarten and then from there I will probably spend some time with her, cook, do all those other things and then I might be doing a study session or a um, like an external learning session or something like that later this evening. But that's it for the bulk of my work day today. Things don't always go this way. As I mentioned, things are not always as smooth. I had a lot of hours to do really focused work today, which because I didn't have meetings in between. If I had meetings in between, I still would have had to complete all of the tasks that I did today, which means that that might have taken me like, it might have taken three or four hours out of my day, which means that today I'm super happy, super lucky. It's like a super kind of early done day for me. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to, uh, definitely do subscribe, join the channel, join the community, listen to the podcast. I've just launched a podcast. Listen to the podcast and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.